Good afternoon. This is Micah Mitchell with Madison County Weather Updates. Uh, it's just after 2.30 uh, in the afternoon on Saturday. And I um, wanted to just take a couple of minutes. This video is going to be kind of clunky because I didn't really prepare anything. Uh, I got some questions across the uh, three platforms uh, dealing with Monday. And so I just wanted to get on here and explain a couple of things real quick. And I... Uh, you know, hopefully add a little bit of clarity to a very muddy system. So um, I've put this uh, graphic out, and I, one, I, I hope that you find this type of a graphic informative. I kind of thought this was a better way to go with the type of system we're dealing with, uh, giving you kind of our confidence in certain amounts of snow. So, you know, we're pretty confident we're getting enough snow to stick to the ground. I'm probably over 90% confident. Well, we're about 60% yeah, confident, 70% confident that we'll pick up one to three inches, maybe 50% confident in three to six, and you know, maybe 10% in getting over six. And that really, over six can't be ruled out, but it seems extremely unlikely. So, um, any rate, I've, I've put this graphic out and I got some questions and I wanted to talk about those real quick. And I, <clears throat> so, again, it's going to be kind of clunky because I wasn't really prepared to do anything. But first, I want to take a look at, um, as you all know, I don't forecast, you know, Kristen and I will discuss stuff and I will forecast by the models. And this, again, this system is exactly why we don't forecast by the models. And the image you're looking at right now is from a website called earth.nullschool.net. And it's a, it's a type of wind map. And it, right now it's set at the 500 millibar level. So you can see one of the, our main low down along the southern jet stream. Uh, one, we're in a La Nina, so you don't really get much southern jet stream interaction in most La Ninas, but we started seeing little hints of it back in late October, a couple of times in November, and here it is showing up you know, right at the end of November, beginning of December, and it's going to play a factor in this. But you can see the, uh, the upper level low coming along the uh, southern jet stream. There's a, it's hard to see on this, but there's a trough digging in right here. That's coming along the polar jet stream up here. As those two progress east, what we think is going to happen is they're going to get closer until this jet stream picks up this piece of energy. Begins to wrap it up and starts to create snow. So the timing of that is what is going to determine everything. As I said in our video three days ago, if that phasing happens earlier, Snow, heavier snow happens farther west, probably more beneficial for, you know, central Indiana if you wanted a big snow event. Um, if it phases on the timing we think it's going to phase on, then we're going to end up on the western edge of the snowfall. We'll get some accumulating snow, but the heavier snow is most likely going to be in Ohio. If the phasing happens even later, like what the American models are wanting to do, and they're not even real wild on phasing, period. Then the snowfall moves considerably east and or just really fails to materialize. So that's kind of what we're looking at. I tend to look more at satellite, more at things like this, like the wind map. And what, what we're wanting to see is, again, here's this uh, southern low. And here's the trough that's going to want to, it's going to dig in and pick that up. And this is still in front of that. If they were get to stack straight up and down, or if they would turn to where the uh, trough in the polar jet was ahead, all bets would be off on the snow. So far, they're staying positioned pretty well. It's all about how quickly they close that gap down. So there's a, a lot of model data out there, and it's showing a lot of different things. So, for instance, here's the 12Z. Um, European set on the Kuchero method, which just it accounts for uh, the atmospheric temperatures. The colder they are above, it can fluff the snow and give you more snow. 
versus a 10 to 1 ratio or sometimes it can be uh, warmer up there and you get less snow versus a 10 to 1 ratio so any rate so the european as, as of 12z has madison county picking up at eh, three to four inches of snow <clears throat> you go to the national weather service nfd model uh, this only goes out to about seven o'clock tuesday morning and um, it's got Madison County picking up two inches of snow. It's got a little bit of a lake effect band up here, but not much. I don't know if it's going to try to fill that in as uh, its runs progress. I don't know if the 18Z is all the way in yet or not. Let's see. Now it's still only up to 66 hours. But um, this uh, extension of lake effect snow will be key in getting this up. You know, beyond three inches or so. So the NFD from the National Weather Service not super keen, but it does have snowfall there for us. And um, if we go to the GFS, GFS wants almost nothing to do with it. Uh, it maybe gives us a dusting, maybe nothing. It's got a little bit of snow over in Ohio. Doesn't even have them picking up good snow. Got a little bit of lake effect well out to the west. It is, it's not real enthused about this system at all. Take a look one more here. This is the, uh, the high res NAM. It's actually backed up a little bit. It was farther east. It's a little closer to what the NFD had, has to sit about two inches or so. Again, it's got the uh, lake effect more straight north, you know, north to south. I don't think that's right, but just so I wanted to show you that that's what some of the data says. The model has been the most consistent. Again, we don't forecast by models. The one that's been the most consistent and the one that I've felt since, you know, I showed it to you back on Wednesday and I thought I had the right idea then. I think it has the right idea now as far as the track and the phasing. I think it's a little too heavy on the snowfall amounts, but it's the uh, Canadian model. It's been pretty consistent. Only thing that's really changed is, you know, the width of the uh, upper level trough has gotten a little, little narrower. But this is at uh, about one o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. You can see the system is down here. I uh, got the low pressure down in northeastern Tennessee. By seven a.m., it's getting up into uh, West Virginia, and we're starting to get enough cold air in here as this. Um, upper level trough advances to start to pick up snow as it's shown around 7 a.m. It might be a little later than that. Then by 1 p.m., yeah, we've got pretty good snow going here as the uh, level, as the low has deepened and started to take a little more of a northern track. It's a, uh, you can see these uh, ISO bars, the, the black lines showing the pressure gradient. They're pretty close together. So we'll be pretty windy, and that'll be what helps to pick up the uh, lake effect. And you can kind of see it starting to pick it up right here. This is by 7 p.m. on Monday. And again, it's got the lake effect now training straight at Madison County. Uh, again, lake effect bands are really hard to predict because they're literally driven by the wind. And if the wind direction changes one degree, it makes a huge difference, especially for a county like ours that's narrower east to west and you know longer north to south just a little change east to west makes a huge difference in madison county because the county is only 15 miles wide and it continues with some snow and this is where i think that it might be overdoing the snow is uh, it's continuing with some decent snowfall and uh, this is at one o'clock tuesday morning and it's still got a decent band of snow going here, even though the low has progressed on off, you know, to the northeast. Uh, some of this would be lake effect driven, but, you know, it may be overdoing it. But it's also got 1028 uh, geopotential heights here. So what it's uh, what it might be doing is the colder, the deeper that upper level trough is, the colder that air is. And the colder the air is, the more it will squeeze every bit of moisture it can out of the atmosphere. So sometimes that's where you end up with surprise uh, bigger snow amounts. 
And I think that's what the uh, Canadian's trying to do. It may be right. It may not be right. But uh, And then it, it progresses the snow on and finally tapers it out by, you know, Tuesday afternoon was still just a little bit of lake effect. But I think it's got the basic track and setup right. <clears throat> Pardon me. And um, so if I were going to use a model, as far as track, I would use the Canadian. But let me go to, uh, you know, at a 10 to 1, it's wanting to put down 7 inches of snow for Anderson. That's going to have to be a perfect setup scenario. It's going to have to do something like squeeze every bit of moisture out of the atmosphere, get a nice, get the perfect fetch off of Lake Michigan. But uh, that's yet another model solution. So as you can see, the models are all over the place on the snowfall amounts. That's why we never forecast by that because you'll drive yourself nuts watching these things move back and forth, east to west, north to south, heavy snow, almost no snow. They'll drive you nuts. So you um one of the other things I wanted to touch on. So I guess let me back up here a little bit. Where we are right now is if things come together absolutely right for Madison County, we can pick up three to six inches of snow. And it's going to have to be absolutely right to get into that upper end of that, but it's still within the realm of possibility. So that's kind of why we're going with that that range instead of dropping down to a two to four. Although I think we would probably do pretty well to drop to two to four. But I, I think in general, we're probably going to end up right around three inches or so. So then the, one of the questions that was asked was about melting. And is the snow even going to be able to accumulate? It's going to be, you know, the ground is relatively warm. Um, <clears throat> Sunshine today, of course, is going to warm that up a little bit more. But, um, and then the temperatures as the snow is falling during the day are going to be in the mid, mid 30s, slowly dropping to the lower 30s. So, of course, that's above freezing. So that promotes melting. So here's, here's what my line of thought has always been, and it served me well. When it gets to where the grassy areas, the rooftops, the cars, all that, can hold frost readily like they did this morning. You know, we had pretty heavy frost this morning. That shows you that those surfaces, the top of the ground is willing to cool down enough that it can drop quickly enough to support frost. So when you start dropping a decent you know, pace of snow on it, those surfaces will cool quickly. They'll start to accumulate snow pretty readily once there's a decent, a decent pace coming down. If it's just some low slow uh, lazy snow and, you know it's not going to accumulate it for at least for a while it'll melt but if it comes down a decent rate it will stick to those surfaces as far as sticking to the roads they're considerably warmer it takes a lot more to cool those surfaces so road impacts it would have to come down pretty hard for the uh, roads to be impacted during the afternoon it's possible you know we can't rule it out but it doesn't seem likely. Where roads might become more impacted will be in the evening and in the overnight hours into Tuesday morning where the temperature drops below freezing and stays there for a while and those surfaces can begin to freeze and create some icy conditions. That's probably where road impact is going to um, come into effect the most. Again, if it snows hard enough, it can impact them you know, earlier, but it doesn't seem likely at this point. Um, an example with the uh, temperatures being like they're going to be on Monday is back in the early days of uh, having this page, back when we were still just Anderson weather updates, uh, we had a system coming in. I want to say it was around November 20th or so, 19th or 20th in 2015. And it had looked good. And then the temperatures just weren't dropping. It was like 35 degrees. Everybody bailed off. You know, it's it's not going to snow. It's going to fall as rain because it's too warm. Or if it does snow, it's going to melt off. And they basically, pretty much everybody dropped any accumulation possibility at all. 
And as I was watching it, I was on visible satellite seeing thin wispy clouds undercutting the higher clouds on visible satellite, which told, and they were doing it from the north, which told me cold air was getting into the, you know, mid and low levels of that storm. So I was confident it was going to fall as snow. At 35 degrees, it has to snow pretty hard. And so I stuck to my forecast at the time of two to four inches of snow. And so people thought I was crazy. And one person told me I was an idiot. Then lo and behold, Alexandria got five inches of snow. Anderson got four inches of snow. You know, it ended up being quite the November snow event. So I think sometimes people get locked into absolute temperature and they don't think about if you're dropping frozen liquid onto these surfaces fast enough, it will cool those surfaces, roads included, but it has to fall fast enough. In the case of the 2015 storm, it was also just huge snowflakes that were falling. So, and again, don't, don't get too distracted by the temperature. The temperature does absolutely have an effect, but it's not the end all be all. It's all in how quickly the snow can fall. So again, um, where we are is at this point is we're looking at three to six inches, probably closer to three, and uh, but six if things really fall into line. So if you're wanting more, wish for that. If you want less, you know, hope that we end up down with the one or two, or hope we end up with the that the GFS is right. But I, uh, I think I were those were the main things that I wanted to cover. So I. Um, I hope you find this informative. I hope it helps answer some questions for you. And this type of system and all these uh, different variables is one of the big reasons why I didn't want to do a snow map because snow maps are putting lines on a map. Storms don't care where the lines on a map are. And you get something that's this questionable and you're just asking for trouble when somebody can bring up an image and not listen to what you said. So... That's kind of why I've avoided a snow map on this one, other than just the uh, the small image showing where the best chance for three inches was. And I think that's probably all I'm going to do. Again, back on the um, back on this uh, graphic here. Also, I would like to know if you find this type of a graphic informative or helpful. That, you know, does it help you to know that to look at this and say, okay, we're almost certainly going to get you know, some snow sticking to the ground. Pretty good chance that we're going to get one to three. Eh, somewhat of a chance of three to six and almost no chance of over six. Is that informative along with the, you know, information up in the text? You know, because that may be the route I would, I might go instead of making maps down the road if, if you find it informative. So I'm going to cut this off. I've already run longer than I planned. I'm at 18 minutes. But I, I just wanted to answer those questions, and I, as if anything changes, of course, we'll update you. But right now, you know, we're looking one to three is pretty certain. Three to six, you know, is questionable. Again, I'm thinking we're going to be somewhere around three inches in Madison County. So we'll just uh, wait and see how it shakes out, and I will talk to you later if anything comes up. In the meantime, thank you all for supporting us. And, you know, those of you who have donated to the page has been very timely. I helped pay for some things that I'm paying for to keep this page going. So I'm very appreciative of it. Also, if you've not been to madcoweather.com, please go and check out the website, visit the website, help us to get some traffic because I'm going to be sending letters out uh, this week to uh, local businesses and see if we can get some backing from them and it'll be helpful to show that we have some traffic on the website that would be beneficial to them so i think that's it for now and until we talk again this is micah mitchell with madison county weather updates thank you very much